this love for the sport had to start somewhere. You must have saw something or heard something or felt something, an impulse that called you. Can you remember? I have a really strong memory. I can see Roger de Coster uh, got beaten by Heike Mikola and me crying tears for hours. I think the first time I remember seeing a motorcycle was in a race of my dad. I told to my dad that I wanted one for my birthday and a couple of months later I got one. I was three years old. I remember my father used to be a rider and uh, my brother as well. Like Friday evening before going to the races, he would just ride up and down the bikes all clean, ready to race. First time I really think uh, this is going to be my life. And I was uh, about uh, 12, 11 years old and I started winning with a bike, uh, you know, that was three years older than uh, my competitors. I was moving up to 65, moving to the 85, I'm mean, always up front. When you are leading everyone, it's difficult to stop at the moment. So now I'm MX2 World Champion and riding with the 250 and still, still loving it and still enjoying it. The more I think about it, that it really feels to me like it was there before I was born. sensations of trying to control the power, trying to control the wheel spin, balancing, always trying to find your limits. That's still, until today, for me, it makes motocross the most complete sport on earth. You've been doing this probably pretty much your whole life? Pretty much. There's a virus, I would say. It's, it's out there, and, and if you catch it, you're infected and you can't get rid of it. This is a true story of the FIM Motocross World Championship, or MXGPs. Established in 1952 and now decided in 40 motos, lasting roughly 35 minutes on 20 racetracks across the globe. It is the oldest and among the most elite championships in the sport. The connection between the fans, the riders, the, the, the camping, the paddock, the spirit, the atmosphere, you don't have this anywhere else. When I first went to my first GP, it was as a fan. The thing that I really remember always, like you would know where the first guy was, hearing him come out of the woods because of the horns. Thousands of them. And where the first guy is, it will follow all the track. Yeah, that sound is like, Goosebumps always, I love it. I think it's really tough to be a world championship rider, a serious one. There's lots of people that get to the world championships, you know, and don't succeed. Those that do have all gone through a lot of heartache, injuries, and I take my hat off to all of those people because it's very, very difficult. There was always a GP close to my house called the Leerop GP. Every year as a child, I went to watch there and I remember the, 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 the taste and the smell of the fuel, how professional it was and all the people around. I was like, one day I'm gonna be there. Round 15 of the 2018 World Championship will be held in Lomo, Belgium. Among the last of dozens of sand tracks like it in the area, Lomo's deep, exhausting sand provide much of the understanding as to why Belgium is the most successful motocross nation in the world and why many committed racers forsake their families and roots in other nations in order to train here. Lomel is the toughest circuit in the world. I don't like that track at all. I tried myself to train here when I was a youngster. First day you want to pack up and cry and go home. You, know, you want to sell everything, that's how bad it is. When you arrive on track tomorrow, you will see everything is flat. So it looks like a fantastic beach, you just miss the water. And then when the first bike starts riding on Saturday morning, after 20 minutes, it's like uh, when you have bombing and uh, it's, it's like you have holes everywhere, roots everywhere, and then you are just fighting to stay on the bike. Riding normal is like uh, you need to be like a cat with nine lives. You really have to be prepared 
to die at least three times in a race because after 10 minutes you're already thinking like, Phew, how the hell am I gonna survive? It's stone old. I mean, they've been racing here since ever. The speed is high. The ground is ever changing. I don't know, it's so physical. You need to be really on top of your game, otherwise that track will kill you. The 2018 World Championship has been a tale of two racers. 32-year-old Antonio Caroli is one title away from Stefan Everett's record of 10 World Championships. But he is currently 30 points behind his young teammate, Jeffrey Hurlings, whose blazing speed is capturing the hearts and minds of the motocross world. Caroli's a fantastic champion, but Jeffrey is training every day. I want to see him in America, see how he gets on there. I think he beat everybody there as well. He's the fastest guy on the planet at the moment. I prefer Hurlings to Crowley. Why? He is the fastest man on the planet Steve. at the moment. He's probably as good as, for the Americans, the GOAT. He's like... He beat the GOAT. I think I he mean, Sorry, Ricky. We yeah. love you lots. Do you look forward to going to a place like Loma, or is that just like uh, going to hell? Some riders are going to hell and back, but for me, it's not like I'm going to heaven, but I feel like you know, I'm comfortable riding here. Obviously, when it's really hot outside and the bombs are gnarly and the track is heavy, I'm like, even gonna be a tough day, but I feel like I'm okay. Kyroli charges down to the first turn, but is it gonna be Hurlings? Hurlings nicks up the inside and takes his seventh foxhole shot of the season. Hurlings quickly dancing his way into the lead. Kyroli second. I mean, it's just the perfect start for Jeffrey Hurlings. Kyroli trying to uh, show his Italian flair here as he continues to go after Hurlings on the opening lap, but it's a blisteringly fast lap for Jeffrey Hurlings. In keeping with his nickname, the Sandman, Jeffrey Hurlings was unstoppable at Lomo. He won both motos on the day by a comfortable margin, extending his championship points lead and taking another step towards dethroning one of motocross's all-time greats. Jeffrey Hurlings wins Grand Prix victory number 12 for the year, and if he wins every Grand Prix from here on out, he can win the championship in Imola. All respect for Tony, you know, where he comes from, came from Sicily, having nothing, and he's now nine-time world champion, and he's so competitive. You're gonna be surprised, he hates losing. And this is for sure one of his best seasons he ever rode, speed-wise and everything. But still he gets beaten more or less every week, and that hurts him. That is clear. He doesn't show it to the outside, but knowing Tony now a couple of years, if he cannot have the upper hand and the control the situation, he don't like it. You know, I've always been looking up to him, and he was a role model for a long, long time as he won nine championships. He is still very fit, and the guy is hard to beat. But I feel like I'm on the right time now to jump in and try to take over his role. I think this year is a major year for us because if we can beat him now, we beat him while he was healthy, while he was strong and while he's on top of his career. He's 10 years younger than me and if I've been able to stay with him, it's uh, crazy. The level is so high at the moment and it's very difficult you know, to, uh, to stay uh, all the season on this level, but my passion for the sport is still how it was when I first get my first bike. I'm really happy that I can still prove that I'm still fast, you know, and I'm fighting for the title. So until I have these feelings, you know, I keep going for sure. Giving up is not uh, one word that he knows and he's not ready to give up yet. He won't be bothered that people are talking about it or that you are asking him this question. But as long as he believes in it, who am I to give up? He's not ready to give up yet. I'm wondering about the rivalry between Tony and Jeffrey. They probably hate it, but I bet it makes them better, and I bet it makes the sport better. They help the MXGP series to reach a level that today is the best championship in terms of speed, in terms of technique. Those two guys have a speed that is uh, completely crazy. I see that the level in the MXGP, it's growing, and I think right now the fastest guys riding a dirt bike are here in Europe, so I would like to try to beat them one day. Next time on MX World, Latvian Pauls Jonas is the reigning MX2 world champion and started the 2018 season with six straight wins.
but Spaniard Jorge Prado has waged a campaign to become the second rider in history to win the title at 17 years old, taking the championship points lead in red plate at round 14 in Loquette. I'm going to be now uh, you know, a hunter, so I will need to hunt for the red plate again. How about this question? Who's going to win the MX2 title? Me. <laughs> At this point of the season, and I will try to do everything I can to just get the title. And Prado is going to jump long here to the inside. Brave move if he does that. Oh, that was the reason why! That, oh, that was an out of order move, actually, I've got to say, from Prado.